My name is Ode Garnero. I am a senior intensivist with strong interest in respiratory care and mechanical ventilation. I work in a 16-bed adult general ICU that has additional 8 beds and a step-down unit. The ICU receives around 1,400 patients every year. About a half of them requires mechanical ventilation. The ICU is a part of a 1,200-bed public hospital in Toulon, a city in South France. The hospital provides medical care for 800,000 inhabitants. In our ICU, use of IntelliVent ASV started in 2010. So far, approximately 4,000 patients have been ventilated with this new mode. Today, IntelliVent ASV is our primary mode and is used in 99.5% of the ventilated patients. There have been no safety issues associated. I am pleased to share my experience in use of IntelliVent ASV mode to treat a patient with severe traumatic brain injury. The patient was a 24-year-old man. His head was hid in a brawl. When the rescue team arrived, his Glasgow coma scale was 3 and the pupils were in anisocoria. He was immediately intubated and ventilated with Hamilton T1 ventilator, and deeply sedated with midazolam and sufentanil. Waiting for the orientation, a CT scan was performed in the local hospital. The result shows a right hemispheric subdural hematoma with 5 mm midline brain shift and a right frontal petechiae. He was transferred to a military neurosurgical hospital and a craniotomy was performed to evacuate the subdural hematoma. As the brain had good vitality, the scalp flap was replaced. Deep sedation continued after the operation. Due to bed shortage, the patient was transferred to our ICU. At arrival, the patient was connected to Hamilton S1 ventilator. Sensors were activated, gender and height were set, Intellivent ASV was used with brain injury condition selected. Alarms were set according to the ICU protocol. Ten minutes after the connection, the patient was ventilated with 18 centimeters of water of inspiratory pressure, 6.5 milliliters per kilogram IBW of tidal volume, 23% of FiO2. The auto-selected percent minute ventilation was 115%, causing 7.8 liters in target minute ventilation. The PETCO2 was 34 mm mercury and SPO2 was 97%. The X-ray showed no abnormality. The arterial blood gas analysis was satisfying. Oxygenation adjustment in IntelliVent ASV, FiO2 was automatically adjusted based on the SpO2 monitoring input. In order to prevent hypoxemic brain injury, the SpO2 was kept at 96%, at least. The SpO2 target was not shifted because no SaO2 SpO2 gradient was observed. In this mode, if brain injury is the selected patient condition, PEEP has to be set manually because PEEP may cause intracranial pressure to increase by decreasing venous return. Ventilation adjustment in IntelliVent ASV, it has been documented that a high PACO2 can increase vessels diameter and per se intracranial tension. In order to prevent hypercapnia, the controller was allowed to apply any inspiratory pressure so that the PETCO2 was strictly controlled. The target PETCO2 was shifted to offset the PACO2 PETCO2 gradient. At arrival, a transcranial Doppler showed a high pulsatility index with low diastolic pressure. The intracranial pressure was above 25 mm mercury. A new CT scan showed increased intracranial hemorrhage with bilateral lesions, right hemispheric edema and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Day 1 Despite barbiturate coma, the patient developed refractory intracranial hypertension. The CT scan showed for Raymond Magnum herniation. Day 2, a unilateral decompressive craniectomy was performed on day 2 because of constant intracranial hypertension. Between day 2 and 5, the medical treatment was maximal with barbiturates, sufentanil, neuromuscular blockers, 
repeated osmotherapy with hypertonic saline. To prevent secondary brain injury, we try to keep normothermia, normocapnia, normoxia, normoglycemia, as much as possible. Anti-epileptic treatment was administered. The IntelliVent ASV offers different screen options to select. This screen is called Physician Screen. On the left part, Inspiratory Airway Pressure, Minute Volume, Tidal Volume, Respiratory Rate, Expiratory Time Constant and SpO2 with alarms and small characters. Below, five parameters are chosen between 12 configurations. In the upper middle square, the airway pressure curve and flow are continuously displayed. In the lower middle square, the ASV graph in the middle shows the current ventilation parameters tidal volume, respiratory rate and minute volume and the targets. In the upper right square, ventilation cockpit, current PET CO2 and inspiratory pressure, and the target. In the lower right square, oxygenation cockpit, current SpO2 and PEEP, and the target. On the right side are three main controls, percent minute volume, PEEP and oxygen. The blue rotating circle means that the setting is automatically adjusted by IntelliVent ASV. This screen is the nurse screen with PCO2 curve and plethysmogram continuously displayed. On the right, SpO2 and PETCO2 with alarms are displayed in small characters. The dynamic lung shows the global respiratory mechanics. We can open the monitoring window to view the current values of all monitoring parameters. The trend curves may help us to understand how the ventilator settings and monitoring parameters changed over a defined length of time. Here we can see how the ventilator automatically adjusted the percent minute ventilation and FiO2 in a stable patient, and the monitored PETCO2 and SpO2. The percent minute volume was continuously and automatically adjusted to match the PETCO2 to the target. In this way, the PACO2 was strictly controlled during the controlled ventilation. Day 5, despite the maximal treatment, the intracranial pressure stayed high. A ventriculostomy was performed for external ventricular cerebrospinal fluid drainage. The intracranial pressure was under control thereafter. Barbiturates were stopped on day 7, switched to propofol, ketamine, midazolam and sufentanil. Cisatracurium was stopped on day 9. All the sedations were stopped on day 12. The patient resumed his spontaneous breathing. In IntelliVent ASV, the patient condition brain injury was deactivated because the patient didn't have any risk of increase in intracranial pressure. The FiO2 was automatically adjusted to keep the SpO2 at 94 to 97 percent. The setting of FiO2 was below 30 percent for the first four days of mechanical ventilation, yet, it increased progressively to more than 50% on day 9. The patient developed a ventilator-associated pneumonia with fever. The chest X-ray showed a lower right lung opacity. The empiric treatment was piperacillin and tesabactam. Organism was not isolated in the sputum specimen. The oxygenation problem was rapidly resolved. The external ventricular CSF drainage tube was clamped on day 14. A CT scan was taken 48 hours later, showing no hydrocephalus. The drainage tube was removed. A tracheostomy was performed on day 17. A gastrostomy was performed on day 18. The quick wean function was activated as soon as the tracheostomy was placed. All of the weaning criteria were met, and the weaning was completed on day 18. Day 22, the patient was transferred to a rehabilitation center. After six months, his Glasgow outcome scale today is 3. He has severe disability. He communicates with his family and caregivers by hand symbols, still tracheotomized and fed via gastrostomy. He is not able to sit or stand. This is a severe brain injury case. After complex medical and surgical treatments for three weeks, the patient survived though severely disabled. 
Intel Event ASV was used in the entire course of mechanical ventilation. Brain injury, a special patient condition, was enabled until the sedation was withdrawn. Through autoregulation of percent minute volume and FiO2 settings, both monitored PETCO2 and SpO2 were maintained within their normal ranges. When the patient developed VAP, the ventilator progressively increased the FiO2 setting to maintain normoxia. The primary advantage of IntelliVent ASV is safety, as it provides an automatic and continuous adjustment of critical control settings so that the PETCO2 and SpO2 are stabilized at the target ranges. In this case, although the patient's conditions changed, both the PETCO2 and SpO2 were stable. No hypoxia was observed even when the patient developed ventilator-associated pneumonia. Clinicians have to monitor the changes and adjust the targets on a daily basis. Such a result may be very difficult to achieve if the ventilator settings would be adjusted manually. My conclusions are, Intel Event ASV is safe for brain injury patients. The auto-adjustment reduces greatly the need of human intervention. The single mode may be used for mechanical ventilation from intubation to weaning.